Hello, this is a basic dental technique, but it's very specific. How do you remove an old bridge most effectively? So first I'm going to anesthetize the area. This is going to be a, a very big uh, restoration. We're restoring all the teeth, placing some implants, restoring many of the mandibular teeth. But in this particular video, we're only going to be removing the bridge in the upper posterior. Now, when I remove the bridge, another part of this case down the road, I'm going to remove the bridge, place an implant in the area of the pontic, and then place individual crowns on the adjacent retainer teeth. That's a lot more stable situation most of the time than a bridge. It's easier to clean and you don't have the torque that you have on a bridge if you've got enough vertical bone and horizontal bone for the implant. I have some incredible news. You can get your CE training online. Yes, you heard me correctly. You can get your CE credit online all from the comfort of your own home. All you gotta do is click the link in the description and go to dentistrymasterclasses.com. So click right now and be prepared to have your life changed for the better. So I'm gonna place a rubber dam with this technique that we use. Place a clamp on the distal tooth and then that long hole and pop that between the a tooth in front of the bridge. So you can see we're Here's our bridge. We've popped it here and we've got this long hole. Now some people say, well, that's not as stable as individual holes. I go into that in the video. What does this accomplish? It keeps any of the pieces from the, of the bridge from falling into the patient's mouth. It keeps 95% of the water out of the patient's mouth because the assistant is aspirating as you're working keeps the tongue out of the way, and it keeps the lips out of the way. So I use this rubber dam method every day. I even use it many times for extractions because it's so easy, it takes about 30 seconds to place, and it accomplishes 99% of what placing a implant, I mean a rubber dam on every tooth accomplishes. And it's so much simpler that dentists will use it. So the first thing we're going to do is use a coarse, smaller barrel diamond, and I'm going to cut through the porcelain. Or if it's lithium desilicate, Emax, or zirconium, I'm going to cut through the lithium desilicate or the zirconium. So the key to this, remember, whenever you're torquing a bridge, you, I mean, you don't want to ever tap a bridge or a crown off of a tooth, in my opinion. When I was in dental school, a dental school instructor was going to show us how to tap crowns off of teeth, bat crowns off of teeth that needed to be reprepped. And so he took a mallet and nostril and went tap, 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 and broke the first tooth off inside the crown at the gum line. Then he was persistent and went tap, 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 broke the second tooth off at the gum line inside the crown. Luckily, he stopped before he got to the third one. So I learned my lesson about tapping off crowns. I don't tap off any crowns. I'm either going to repair the crown or I'm going to replace the crown or bridge. I'm not going to tap it off because if you tap it off, you have created a big problem. At that point, the patient's probably going to need either a, if you tap off the tooth, either a endo and a post in a crown or extract the tooth and place an implant. Bottom line, you do not want to go there, so don't tap crowns off teeth. If you're going to replace that crown, cut the crown off. Don't tap it off. Forty years of practice, I've never tapped off a crown. Now the key, if you're cutting a crown or a bridge, if you're cutting a bridge off, our crown, you've got to have space to move it into. So if you're cutting off a crown, cut between the crown and the adjacent tooth with a thin, coarse barrel diamond. So you can torque that area into the space. If you're cutting off this bridge, you need to cut between the pontic and one of the retainers so you can move 
the pieces into that space. If you don't have to have a space to move them into, you're not, it's going to be very difficult to torque those pieces. See, so I'm just cutting through the porcelain. Now, I like to use an electric hand piece for this because there's so much torque on it. If you're using a small head air-driven handpiece, it's putting lots of torque and you may burn out a turbine or ruin a turbine. So I like to use an electric handpiece. Now this is a 330 carbide burr to cut through the metal. Lots of water and you can see how all the pieces are being caught by the rubber dam and the water spray. So all that's not fly floating around in the patient's mouth. Be sure you use a rubber dam when you're doing most dental techniques and you'll like this rubber dam technique because it's so easy and so effective. See, so cutting through, all the way through the metal. Lots of water. And periodically you'll rinse this off and take a look and be sure you're all, all the way through the metal. I like these large, thin, occlusal mirrors. I, we made a teaching video for assistance on that technique, so that'll be in the the teaching section for assistance. That was on how to aspirate and how to use the large occlusal mirrors. There's a lot of good stuff going into the dental assisting part of dentistrymasterclasses.com, so many of you dental assistants may want to watch those. So you want to cut through this part of the bridge, the connector. So you've got a space to move it into. Then I'm going to torque these pieces and it's going to move into that space. If you don't have that space, you don't have any place to torque into. For years I tried to just make this cut and this cut and it was just so difficult to get the bridge out. Once I started making the cut in the connector, it got very easy. So you can use either an amalgam carver or you can use an elevator. Now sometimes it's easier to get the amalgam, the flat end of the amalgam carver in and torque that, that big piece in the pontic out. Okay, then I'm gonna cut through this part and torque it this way. Use the same burr as the carbide burr and the coarse diamond burr. You don't want to use a big, thick, wide diamond, coarse barrel diamond because the hole's too big to torque in. You want it as small as you can, as you can make it. Then you can torque that right out. Now you're going to torque this piece off. Be sure you've cut all the way through the metal. I'm using the amalgam carver again to torque it. A little bit of metal was left and cut through this and you'll torque it palatal facially. And again, I'm using an electric hand piece for this. You can put a lot more torque on it. And when that comes out, the rubber dam's probably going to come off with it since the clamp is on that tooth. So there you have it. That's, how, that's the most effective way I've found to remove a bridge. So we're going to, in later cases, you're going to see the entire case in dentistrymasterclasses.com. It's a complex restorative case. We're going to place an implant here and cr individual crowns on these two teeth. We're replacing crowns and placing other crowns and veneers on the anterior teeth. I'm increasing the vertical dimension. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be a very interesting and fabulous case. So be watching for that in the next few months. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time.